All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for tuning in. As always, guys, before we get started, this is not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. Now, on today's episode, guys, we do have some bad news. We have some bad news for Bitcoin and the crypto market as a whole. I'm going to break it all down. We also got some good news, too. So you're going to want to stay to the end of this episode because things are look things are getting interesting. Let's put it that way, guys. Remember, we are about one year away from the Bitcoin halving cycle, which is what I base my entire investment thesis on. So let's go ahead. Let's get straight into it, guys, uh, by looking at coin market cap. Uh, Bitcoin sitting at 30,000, up about 1% on a day. Uh, Ethereum sitting at 1,900, up about 4%. As you guys know, Bitcoin, um, Bitcoin, uh, the markets move as Bitcoin moves. Now, Chico Crypto actually posted this chart, and I wanted to share it with y'all. This is how money flows in a, in a traditional uh, four-year crypto cycle. So the money comes from fiat, right, goes into Bitcoin. When Bitcoin pumps, investors such as myself and even large-scale investors, they take profits from Bitcoin and they pour it into Ethereum, the second largest cryptocurrency. Uh, when Ethereum pumps, they then take profits from Ethereum and they pump it into uh, low, call, low cap coins and micro cap coins. And then when people make profit in low cap and micro cap coins, they then either cash out and take fiat or they recycle it back into Bitcoin. So this is this is how I base my investing. This is exactly how I do it. So just something I thought that was interesting to look at. Now, uh, let's get into the bad news. Let's get into the bad news. So you guys remember last episode, we covered uh, BlackRock's Bitcoin ETF, uh, what you need to know. This is from Forbes. So you guys know BlackRock filed for a Bitcoin spot ETF. We don't have a Bitcoin spot ETF right now. And so now the SEC actually responded to this. Check out what the SEC said. This is from the Wall Street Journal, guys. Uh, SEC says spot Bitcoin ETF filings are inadequate. Regulator tells NASDAQ uh, that applications from BlackRock, Fidelity, and others aren't clear and comprehensive. So what does this mean? So they haven't denied the, the, the spot ETF. They didn't say they're, they're denying it like the, uh, the SEC has denied previous Bitcoin spot ETFs that's been filed. So what is going to happen? Well, I really don't know. I don't know how long this is going to take. I don't know if BlackRock's going to have to refile. But if, which I, I guess, you know, I'm, I'm, I am a betting man because I'm putting my own money in these markets. I think that BlackRock's spot ETF is going to get approved. And I think that BlackRock, BlackRock is going to have the first Bitcoin spot ETF approved. But Kevin, how, how can you know that? That's a bold statement. Well, let me show you this, guys. This is from Finbolt. This is BlackRock's record for ETFs approved by the SEC, 575 to 1, meaning that when BlackRock files for an ETF, it gets approved. And why is that bullish for cryptocurrency? Well, guys, you know, it, a spot ETF, these institutions will have to buy actual Bitcoin at the actual Bitcoin spot price, not a paper representation of Bitcoin. This, the amount of money that will flow into this asset perfectly correlating with the Bitcoin halving cycle. Absolutely incredible what can happen. Now, again, guys, this is not financial advice. I'm only going on my own research. You need to do your own research. You need to research the Bitcoin halving cycle. And, um, you know, we can look at, you know, guys, BlackRock, when they want an ETF approved, it gets approved. And again, why this is so bullish is that, you know, you can look this up. Uh, when the first uh, spot ETF for gold was approved, the price of gold absolutely skyrocketed. Now, when the price skyrockets, understand that you know BlackRock and these big financial institutions will then be able to manipulate these markets the same way they man manipulate stocks, the same way they manipulate other ETFs. So it's not all good that BlackRock's in this, but what I try to explain to you on this channel is because you're smart, a lot of you on this channel, you actually get it. We're front running the big money. We're front running BlackRock if you're invested in this. You're front running Fidelity. You're, you're front running Charles Schwab and Kathy Woods. You're front running all the big money by being in these markets. So it's an interesting opportunity. We're, we're going to see some fireworks in the next year, I think, good and bad, because understand, guys, based on a heaven and cycle, we could easily go back to 15,000. We could have a leg up to 40, 50,000, pull back to 15 before blasting off to 200,000. Anything can happen. Now, if you're wondering why I'm so confident that BlackRock's going to get this ETF approved, obviously you're seeing 575 to 1, you know, you're going to bet against BlackRock. But a lot of you not understanding how powerful BlackRock is or who BlackRock is. Uh, so let me show you guys. We talked about this video last week 
um, James O'Keefe. Uh, and again, guys, feel free if you think this is fake or you think this isn't real or this is fake news. I'm only going, this is just my assumption. This is a recruiter that was filmed undercover and he works for BlackRock. And listen to what he says. We're going to break it down. Check it out. They don't want to be in the news. They, they don't want people to talk about them. They don't want to be anywhere on the radar. Why not? I don't know, but I suspect it's probably because it's easier to do things when people aren't thinking about it. All of these financial institutions, they buy politicians. You can take this big ton of money and then you can start to buy people. I work for uh, a company called BlackRock. Meet Serge Varley, a recruiter at BlackRock. Let me tell you, it's not the who's the person. It's who's controlling the, the wallet. So it's, it's the- And who's that? The hedge funds, BlackRock, the banks. These guys are campaign financing. Yep, you can buy your candidates. Obviously, we have the system in place. First, there's the Senate. This guy's rich. You got 10 grand, you can buy a senator. I can give you 500k right now. No questions asked. Yeah. Uh, I didn't do it. It's done. Does, yeah. like, everybody do that? Does BlackRock do that? Yeah. It doesn't matter who wins. They're still right. They're, they're my pocket at this point. Here's Serge Varley on how good war is for BlackRock's business. Do you have any um, thoughts on the Ukraine-Russia war? Yeah, I mean, I, I do have thoughts. What, it, what are they? Ukraine is good for business. You, you know, right? I'll, I'll give an example. Russia Russia blows up Ukraine's grain silos. The price of wheat's going to go mad up. The Ukrainian economy is tied very largely to the wheat market, global wheat market. Prices of bread, of, you know, it, literally everything is, it goes up and down. This is fantastic if you're trading. Volatility creates opportunity to make profit. War is real f***ing good for, for business. All right, guys. A lot to break down right there. And again, guys, if you think that's fake, just let me know in the comments. Uh, I think it's real. I think this guy really does work for BlackRock. Uh, you know, $10,000 to buy a senator. That seems a little bit crazy. I would think it would cost a little bit more to bribe him, right? Maybe. I mean, war being good for business. As you guys know, before this video even came out, I told you guys, you know, Ukraine was the largest grain exporter in the world that, uh, you know, the powers that be, you know, the, the big military industrial complex, they love war because it's so profitable for them so that, you know, that entire war wasn't about, you know, Ukraine's uh, democracy. It was about literally money. Unfortunately, guys, so really disturbing video. So um, I hope this kind of demonstrates the kind of influence and power that BlackRock has. That's why, you know, I'm on record that I think that BlackRock is going to get this ETF approved. Whether they have to buy a senator or not, it's just inevitable. And the reason why it's inevitable is because, guys, we already have a futures ETF. We have a Bitcoin leverage ETF. So there's no precedent for the SEC or any any entity to stand on to not allow this to go through. Now, when is it going to happen? I don't know. I don't know. Sooner than later, and I think within within the year, within the year, because it's going to perfectly coincide with the Bitcoin halving cycle, and it's going to be crazy. I think it's going to be crazy. Now, uh, another another clue, guys, is this: Kathy Woods, Ark Invest, reportedly first in line for a spot Bitcoin ETF. Ark Invest filed for a spot Bitcoin ETF in collaboration with 21 shares long before BlackRock did. And its application is reportedly first in line. For the SEC's approval. So you guys know I, I, I think very highly of Kathy Woods. I think that she's brilliant. Uh, I base a lot of my investing on what Kathy Woods does. So uh, Kathy Woods obviously has called for like Bitcoin to go to like a million per coin. Uh, she manages some of, you know, the richest people in the world's money in her funds. And, uh, you know, I think she sees the writing on the wall. I think Kathy Woods definitely knows what's going on. So she knows that, you know, BlackRock's going to get their ETF approved. You know, Fidelity's going to get theirs, and she's going to fall somewhere along the line in there. So again, guys, this is just more, more money, more institutional money flowing into this asset. And the amount of money that can flow into it, guys, get ready. Buckle up. It's going to be nuts. It's going to be nuts. Now, uh, check it out. Breaking $4 trillion giant Fidelity refiles for spot Bitcoin ETF. So like that guy, like the BlackRock recruiter said, the big banks run the world. You know, it's not who controls the president. We're not worried about the president. It's who controls the wallet of the president. 
and the big banks around the world, if they want this to go through, it's going to happen only when they want it to happen. And at this point, it's just inevitable, guys. You know, and thank you so much if you made it this far in the video. Drop me a 100 emoji in the comments because you guys know I've always told the truth on this channel. You know, I haven't been perfect. I haven't been perfect, but my record's been pretty good. You know, when everyone else was saying Bitcoin was going to be banned, when Bitcoin's a security, you know, I told y'all Bitcoin's not a security from day one on this channel. And look now, look where we're at now. SEC's even saying it's a commodity. Now, all other altcoins besides Ethereum, shh, I, buckle up, guys, because the war on crypto is not going to stop. You know, even with the Bitcoin spot ETF being, being uh, even if that gets approved, this war on Bitcoin and digital assets, it's not going to stop. And what the next attack is going to be, once it's once it's legalized per se, will be the environmental aspect. So if, if your if your coin is a proof of work coin, the environmentalist people are going to come at them hard. So that's going to be the next battle we're going to fight. But understand that this is going to be continuous. If you're investing in these markets, it's it's a blood sport. It is a blood sport. Now let's get to President Biden, you guys. Before I get started, President Biden, the most popular president in in the history of mankind. His son, Hunter, smartest guy I know, um, Hunter's laptop, 100%, great laptop. Go check it out for yourself. Um, let's get started on Biden, and I want you to really ask yourself, do you think Biden fully understands anything about Bitcoin, anything about crypto, or is he reading from a script? Is he being handed a narrative and in, uh, in being told from big banks and his handlers on what to do with Bitcoin? What do you think? So this is what President Biden said. President Biden says he'll make he'll make tax system fair, eliminate loopholes for crypto traders. President Biden, in light of his upcoming campaign, has made a promise regarding regarding the crypto industry and traders. According to the current president, he will work on making the current tax system fair by eliminating loopholes for crypto traders. So what does this mean? Well, first of all, is Biden even going to be president? We don't know. We don't know. We don't even know if he's going to be the nomination for the Democrats. That we don't know. We know he's anti-crypto. We know that. He's made that very clear. He's against digital assets. But eliminating loopholes, there are no loopholes, guys. I mean, if you sell Bitcoin, it's a taxable event. If you sell any crypto, it's a taxable event. It, it, it's taxed the same way, you know, if you sold your stocks. It's, it's taxed the same way. It, Bitcoin's a commodity. So what this tells me is they know a bull market's coming. They know that a bunch of <laughs> a bunch of plebs like like you and me are probably going to make a bunch of money from crypto and Bitcoin and they want their cut. They want their cut. They don't want, think about it, guys. Imagine a scenario where everyone bought Bitcoin at $100 of Bitcoin or, you know, they bought it after the pandemic for $3,000 per Bitcoin and it ran up to 70, 60,000 and everybody got rich. Do you think the federal government wants that? No. They want you all being debt slaves. They want you all working nine to fives, paying taxes. They don't want a bunch of people with wealth and influence. That's that's the number one thing they do not want. You could debate me on this, but if you think the federal government wants you to be financially free and and away from their control, you're wrong at this point, guys. It's 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 the establishment. This is what they want. It's the tale is old as time. The have nots first to have yachts. I mean, come on. So. Uh, Again, let me know in the comments, guys. I mean, what else could this mean? I mean, if crypto was going to go to zero, if wait, if crypto was going to go to zero and it was all going to be banned, it was all not going to exist anymore, what would he be talking about, about tax provisions for loopholes for crypto traders? Because he knows what I know. His handlers know. They can't stop it, guys. It's coming. Get ready. Get ready, guys. You know, look, look. Right now, the part of the cycle we're in, my strategy is, is just dollar cost averaging into Bitcoin, buy Bitcoin every week, buying altcoins, you know, just creating a portfolio and, and accumulating as much as I can. That's why I don't get too, uh, I don't get too emotional when we have these big dips because I see them as buying opportunities because I don't know how much longer we're going to be able to buy at these price levels. Remember guys, I was the guy saying when it was 15, 16,000, I was buying when everybody said I was crazy, right? So you guys get it. You made it this far in the video. You you get it. You're smart. That's one thing. That's one thing I noticed with like y'all. Most of my audience that you know, because I talk to a lot of y'all off off camera, is that it, we get it. You know what I'm saying? We get it. A lot of people get it, and a lot of you are gonna be 
make a lot of money in crypto. And I think it's awesome, guys. I think it's awesome because I just think, you know, it's 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 a beautiful to have other ways to create generational wealth, you know, not just, you know, working a job, guys, because you know it, it it's gonna be really hard to work a nine to five job. Nothing against working a nine to five job. Nothing against, you know, earning an honest living, but you know, guys, with inflation, it's just going to be harder and harder. It's going to get harder and harder to make money. It's going to get harder and harder to raise a family. It's going to get harder and harder to buy a house. And, you know, having an alternative to to get away from the inflation, to get away from the devaluing of our dollar, it's a beautiful thing. Um, check out this BlockWorks article, guys. SEC can't seize power in regulating digital assets. Coinbase argues the SEC does not have the authority that is asserted in its lawsuit against Coinbase. The crypto exchange argues. So you guys know that the SEC is suing Coinbase. And guys, you know, I hold, I hold you know, I hold, I use Coinbase for pretty much all my crypto purchases. About 90% of my crypto I buy through Coinbase. So seeing the SEC going after the crypto exchange you're using is obviously not a good thing. Um, but again, guys, I kind of like to look what's going on behind the scenes, not just what the media wants me to see. And, you know, we talked about BlackRock earlier in this episode. Who do you guys think BlackRock's using to custody and custodial and buy all their Bitcoin? They're using Coinbase. So, <laughs> I mean, unless you think the federal government, the SEC is more powerful than BlackRock. I don't think that. I don't think that. So make your own financial decisions. Uh Next, okay, same, the CoinDesk SEC has no jurisdiction over cryptos and Coinbase exchange says. So, guys, SEC has a serious legal, I mean, uh, Coinbase has a very, very serious legal department. And they're going to fight this. And I think that, you know, as much as they fight it, and it could be a long fight, but I think that the the legal framework, I mean, guys, think about it. The SEC, they loved FTX. They had FTX had Super Bowl commercials. What FTX was doing, besides the nefarious stuff, what F, what FTX was supposed to be doing is pretty much what Coinbase is doing. So how could FTX be be green lighted and, and and given the reins to do whatever they want in the crypto world and end up being the biggest scammers of all time, but Coinbase not be allowed to? So I think the SEC is going to lose. I think Gary Gensler is going to either be fired or resign, and then the bull market will start. I mean, now check this out. From the Economic Times, crypto is here to stay, must be regulated. Hong Kong Treasury Chief. So guys, what bizarre world are we living in that the the, the, the Chai Coms, the Chinese Communist Party, is greenlighting crypto, is embracing this new crypto economy, is embracing digital assets, and the United States is doing everything in our power to regulate all this offshore. So all imagine how many future Fortune 500 companies we're losing. Imagine if we lost Coinbase, a, a Fortune 500 company. We lost a publicly traded company. And we lost them to China. Do you guys want to see China take more of our businesses? Do you guys want to see this industry be regulated and, and, and be under the CCP's jurisdiction? I mean, this is, guys, this isn't. Republican versus Democrat thing. This is just simply common sense. We want businesses in America. We want innovation in America. We want jobs in America. We want financial freedom in America. Uh, next story, guys. Huge story. Went under the radar. MicroStrategies. Michael Saylor makes largest Bitcoin acquisition since prices peaked in late 2021. Guys, MicroStrategies bought $347 million of Bitcoin from April through June. Guys, Microsoft, they, this just happened. This just happened. Microsoft, he bought more Bitcoin. So MicroStrategies is a pump, publicly traded company. Michael Saylor is the CEO. They bought more Bitcoin. They hold almost 1% of the Bitcoin supply. Do you guys not think he knows something? When you see all these dominoes going into place, People are talking behind the scenes, so just kind of ignore what the mainstream media is saying. Ignore what, 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 your, what your friend at work is saying that knows nothing about Bitcoin. Ignore what the politicians are saying, guys, because they're bought and paid for. Um, check this out, guys. SBI CEO, every bank in Japan will use Ripple's XRP by 2025. Remember, guys, XRP is still in a lawsuit with the SEC. And while other influencers on other channels were telling you, oh, the SEC lawsuit, that's going to be over in two weeks or whatever, what was I telling you from day one? That, guys, and, I, and for full disclosure, I do hold XRP. I have bought XRP. But when I bought XRP two years ago, whatever it was, I told y'all on this channel, <laughs> don't, don't think you're going to get rich quick in XRP. 
That lawsuit is going to get drug out. I told y'all that two years ago, and it's still being drug out. Now, I think we're closer to the end than the, than the start, but I don't know. I don't know. I, I think that the SEC will eventually lose. They will eventually cave, and I do think that XRP will be mass adopted, not just in the United States, but banks all around the world because it's very, very powerful. It's a very, very powerful tool. Um, Definitely do your own research on XRP. I'm not telling you to buy XRP. I'm not doing that. All right, Crypto Potato, check this out. UK passes bill establishing crypto and stablecoins as regulated financial activities. So King Charles granted the royal assent to landmark a bill to regain control of the financial services rule book. Wow, guys. So we're seeing China embracing crypto. Now we're seeing the UK embrace crypto. Seems that everybody but the United States, boy, do we need a new administration. We need a new administration ASAP. Last story, guys, a little positive news. MasterCard building Ethereum-based blockchain app store for regulated financial apps. Remember I told you guys last episode, you know, Ethereum seems to be the chosen one. Again, guys, I'm not the biggest fan of Ethereum. I do hold a bunch of Ethereum, hold a bunch of Ethereum NFTs. I, I, I don't think it's the best blockchain. I think it's going to be used for some nefarious purposes. I don't trust the team. Uh, but it does seem to be the chosen one. And the SEC has even put Ethereum into its own category in other categories. So basically, Ethereum is not a commodity or a security. It's in an other category, which very strange, very strange. We'll continue to monitor that. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for tuning in, man. I hope you all have a great 4th of July. Uh, let me know in the comments what you guys think. Uh, is this the start of the Bitcoin happening? Anyway, y'all, I'm out. Peace.